We now move on to the next item of business, which is topical questions. Question number one uh, from Jackie Bailey has been withdrawn. So I'll therefore move to question number two and call Oliver Mundell. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what assessment is made of financial difficulties at Police Scotland following the departure of its Director of Financial Services. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the Scottish Government is committed to protecting the police resource budget for the entirety of this Parliament, delivering an additional £100 million of investment over the next five years. Uh, we have also provided an additional £55 million of reform funding in 2016-17. With regards to the departure of the Director of Financial Services, this is a matter for the Board of the Scottish Police Authority and Police Scotland. The Scottish Government has no role in this matter. Oliver Mundell. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his answer. However, one of the most significant driving factors behind the establishment of Police Scotland was promised cost efficiencies. When, with this ongoing development and last year's Audit Scotland report, which warned of a potential £85 million shortfall in the policing budget by 2018-19. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what analysis his government has made that, of, on what impact this broken promise will have on frontline services, particularly in rural communities like Dumfries and Galloway? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure whether the member is aware that the Audit Scotland report has actually been overtaken by events. The Audit Scotland report refers to the financial situation pr prior to the previous uh, spending review period uh, and doesn't take into account the allocations of funding which was then arrived at by the Scottish Government. So, for example, it took no account of the additional £55 million that I've just made reference to as part of the reform budget. <coughs> and it also worked on the assumption that there would be no further financial savings achieved within Police Scotland, which is exactly what the reform budget is there to do, is there to make sure we invest in areas in order to get greater efficiency uh, from that. So the uh, financial uh, position that was set out by the Audit Scotland report is not one that's now reflective of the situation following the spending review. And I hope that will give the member some reassurance of the actions which the Scottish Government is taking in order to make sure that we continue to invest in our police service here in Scotland. And we certainly don't copy uh, the approach that his colleagues in England and Wales have taken, which has resulted in almost 17,000 police officers being lost. Oliver Mundell. In that case, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if, police, uh, if the Scottish Police Authority now has a long-term financial strategy as recommended in the, Auditor, in, in the Auditor General report in November 2013 and again in December 2015. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, yet again, uh, President Officer, this is something which has also been overtaken by events because the SPA have already uh, set out their initial version of the, uh, long -term, uh, their long term financial strategy, which will be a 10 year strategy taking them up to 2025 uh, 20, 26. And understand that the SPA intend to update that yet further in the coming months uh, as they revise it going forward over uh, the next few months. So that's an issue which will be taken forward by the SPA and again has already been set out by the initial uh, approach that they've set out for the long-term financial strategy, as was recommended rightly so uh, by the Audit Scotland report. Liam MacArthur. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. In relation to Police Scotland's finances, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the story in the press today that Police Scotland's redundancy bill has come to £34 million so far. More than 1,000 civilian staff have lost their jobs since the creation of the National Force. Does the Cabinet Secretary acknowledge that the arbitrary officer target uh, reached an agreement uh, between the SNP and the Tories after the 2007 election? has contributed to the hemorrhaging of skilled civilian staff, forcing officers to undertake jobs they weren't trained for, and that in some cases has caused real harm. Cabinet Secretary. Um, the, we've always been very clear with the reform of policing is that there would be areas of overlap when you have eight forces coming into one. It's inevitable there'll be aspects that already are provided in one area that have already been delivered in another. And that's what has been the consequence of the uh, changing in staffing levels which have been necessary in Police Scotland. So we were clear as part of the reform journey is that there were areas of duplication and that would result in uh, a lower level of staff in Police Scotland than we had across the eight forces. 
Of course, the redundancy programme which we have in place is a programme which is there in order to allow those staff who may find themselves in posts which are no longer required as a result of the reform programme uh, to be able to take care of retirement or to take voluntary redundancy. Of course, the member will also acknowledge that we have a, an agreed position of uh, no uh, compulsory redundancies, and that is the approach which the SPA are taking forward. On a specific point around the, uh, the, uh, the investment which has been put into uh, voluntary uh, redundancy and early retirement packages of some £33 million, uh, what the member uh, should also recognise is that uh, that upfront investment actually releases some £33 million each year going forward which was part of the reform approach in order to make sure the resources were being diverted into more effective areas of policing that were necessary than being used in areas which no longer had to be covered or were being duplicated elsewhere. And what we will do is we will continue to work with Police Scotland to make sure that they can take that programme of reform forward. And that's exactly why we have provided an extra year uh, of the uh, reform budget in this financial year to assist Police Scotland in that ongoing reform project programme uh, that they have been taking forward over the last three years. Ben McPherson. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how much Police Scotland is required to pay annually in VAT. Cabinet Secretary. Well, the member uh, may be aware that Police Scotland is the only force in the UK that is required to pay VAT or is unable to reclaim VAT. No other police service of the 44 police services in the UK are required to pay any VAT. It's the exact same for our fire service here in Scotland. That's costing the Scottish taxpayer uh, between £25 to £30 million pounds per year. That's the equivalent of approximately 1,000 members of staff. We've made it repeatedly known, President Officer, to the UK Government that this discriminatory approach to Police Scotland is entirely unacceptable and that the UK Government should be treating Police Scotland in the same way that every other police service across the UK and Northern Ireland is treated and treated with parity and being allowed to reclaim that. The only reason that it's not been taken forward is because UK ministers can't be bothered lifting the pen to make sure that action is taken to redress yeah. this what is an extremely unfortunate situation that discriminates against Police Scotland. Neil Finlay. Does the Cabinet Secretary believe that morale in the police has uh, improved or deteriorated following the establishment of Police Scotland and the subsequent financial problems it has experienced? Terribly sorry, Cabinet Secretary, I almost forgot about you. It's okay. I'll try my best to answer the member's question. Uh, there is no doubt there are uh, serious issues around morale within uh, Police Scotland, which the staff survey, which was published um, early at the end, towards the end of last year, highlighted, and the new Chief Counsel has made it very clear that a key part of the work which he will be taking forward is to make sure uh, that the issues of concern which have been raised in the course of that staff survey are addressed, and they have a range of work which are now taking forward along with the SPA in order to address the concerns which have been raised by staff. As I am sure the member will recognise, when any major organisation goes through significant reform, there are consequences that can have an impact on staff morale. And his own party was supportive of the creating of a single force here in Scotland. And the Chief Constable and SP have set out very clearly the course of action they will take in order to address the issues that have been highlighted in the staff survey. Douglas Ross. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The uh, Cabinet Secretary and my colleague Oliver Mundell have both mentioned the Auditor General report. That report said that the 2014-15 SPA accounts were incomplete, of poor quality and subject to substantial changes. The Auditor General went on to say that they were exceptional in the experience of auditing public sector accounts. To use the Cabinet Secretary's own words, has he lifted a pen or has there been any action since that statement in the Auditor General's report for the Scottish Government and the SPA to work together to ensure that that substandard set of accounts do not get presented in future to allow us to have proper scrutiny of the budgets of Police Scotland. Cabinet Secretary. Well, again, the member uh, again is slightly behind the curve in this issue because there's already action being taken in order to address these very issues. The first part of that was set out in the governance review. It was taken forward by the chair of the SPA, setting out the need to make sure that the accountable officer, who is the chief executive of the SPA, is in a position where they can exert the right type of 
actions that are necessary in order to deal with police finance matters. That has been addressed within the Police Governance Review, and we have set out the need to take that forward. They have also set out their financial strategy, which was published towards the end of March last of this year, in order to set out the course of action which they are taking. So, yet again, the member is slightly behind the curve on this matter. There is a range of action which has been taken forward, and I have got no doubt that the SPA and the Chief Constable will continue that programme of work in order to address the concerns which have been raised by Audit Scotland. Gil Patterson. Thanks very much, Thanks very much Presiding Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what support has the Scottish Government had from the other parties in this Parliament to end this farce of the Police Scotland paying this VAT, uh, being singled out indeed to pay this VAT against any other authority in the United Kingdom? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I would hope that all members in this uh, Parliament would recognise the situation that Police Scotland find themselves in, in being discriminated in this way by the UK Government is completely unacceptable. I know there has been elements of point fingering in saying that um, you knew this before uh, you created Police Scotland, and it's because what is one of the often excuses that I hear from the Conservative benches and others is it's because you've created a single force. Well, if that is the case, why does the PSNI have the right to reclaim VAT. It's a single force mm -hmm. uh, which covers Northern Ireland. The exact same for the fire service when they created mm -hmm. Highways England. They were happy to give them uh, VAT exemption. As I note, the heads are down in the Conservative benches in these matters. Uh, but maybe at some point they will start to stand up for Scotland's interests and Police Scotland's interests and make sure that Police Scotland is treated in a fair way, in the exact same way of every other police service in the UK and is given the right to reclaim VAT that's costing the Scottish taxpayer between £25 to £30 million pounds a year. The final question is from Alex Johnson. Would the Cabinet Secretary take this opportunity to confirm that the full cost of Police Scotland is covered from the Scottish Bloc grant and that, including the VAT, and that if we no longer had to have a police force pay VAT, it would then be wholly reasonable for the cost of that VAT to be removed from the calculation of the Bloc grant? Cabinet Secretary. So I think, President Officer, there we've got is this a warped way in which the Conservative Party want to look at this issue. The reality is that most of our emergency services provisions within the UK are given the right to reclaim VAT, whether it be emergency services or police services. There is only one in the whole of the UK that is not able to do that, and that is Police Scotland. And I would have thought Alec Johnston, given how often he's so keen to demand that the Scottish Government do X, Y and Z, he would be big enough, big enough to stand up to his colleagues down in Westminster and say, put this right and make sure that Police Scotland are able to reclaim VAT just like any other police force in the UK. 